Thank you for your interest in Trump Loy Meets Surrealism Escaping Reality Exhibition. My name is Delaney Burke, and I'm a board member at the John F. Pito Studio Museum. I will be telling you a little bit about the painters in this exhibition. Gary Irby, Franz Joseph Ponstinkel, and Wynne Zibian. I will be providing a bit of their personal and artistic background before delving into the artwork present at this exhibition. Gary Irby was born in 1944 in Union City, New Jersey, and learned everything about painting through self-teaching. He worked as an engraver in the late 60s to support his family and develop painting skills in his spare time. In 1967, he discovered Trompe painting and studied its traditional masters. By 1969, Irby had developed a Trompe technique, utilizing levitation of objects in empty space, a style that was revolutionary setting a new standard of contemporary trompe l'oeil paintings. The John F. Pito Studio Museum is delighted to have Irby's work on display with us once again. Shown here is Gary Irby's painting, Staff of Life, created in 1970 using oil on canvas. This piece stands at 10 inches by 14 inches. A chain is featured in this work as well as Irby's many other works. Note how the faceless coins sitting on the tray and stuck into the sponge are all floating in empty space. This piece in particular is an excellent example of the illusionary meeting the surreal, something Gary Irby strives for quite frequently. Winter, created in 1993 by Gary Irby sized at 14 inches by 6.5 inches, created using oil on shaped panel. This piece highlights the masterfulness with which the artist combines flat space forms, enhanced by shadow, light, and color, to create a three-dimensional illusion. The board appears to sit above the page, enhanced by Gary Irby's choice of ornate frame. Twelve to one, painted by Gary Irby in 1970, stands at 38 inches by 28 inches without the frame, and was created using oil on canvas. Irby's use of nails in this work adds motion and almost a dynamic quality to his piece. His implementation of nails is an homage to John F. Peter who frequently features nails in his rack paintings. Shown here we have Gary Irby's Ice Age, created in 1969, standing at 38 inches by 28 inches without frame and created using oil on canvas. Note once again the artist's deliberate choice of an ornate frame to complement his work, as well as contrast with the everyday subject matter of the working man shown here. Shown here, we have Gary Irby's 76 special, created in 1975. This piece stands at 29 inches by 33 inches, including the glass it is encased in. This sculpture was created using oil on bronze and copper, giving it the illusion of being a hot dog that you almost just want to take a bite of. Here we have The Pressure of Time, created by Gary Irby in 1965. This piece stands at 29 inches by 33 inches without frame and was created using oil on board. In this work, Irby continues to use levitation of items, freeing objects from their natural purpose and typical surroundings. A weight suspended in midair, tenuously supported by four green beans, threatens to crush the clock sitting beneath it, with a repetition of the weight fading into the distance. An artist with no formal training, Franz Joseph Ponstingel created surreal landscapes, dreamlike spaces, and experimented with transforming three-dimensional space. Born in 1927 in Allentown, Pennsylvania, Ponstingel grew up on a 60-acre farm in the nearby town of Coopersburg. After his sophomore year, he ended his formal education and focused on farming. It was during these years that he found his artistic passion. His work prefigured many developments in contemporary art today, including digital rendering of unseen works, the blurring of abstraction and representation, and the ability to create depth through abstract forms. This painting by Franz Joseph Ponstengel 
is untitled and was created in 1965, standing at 26 inches by 22 inches, painted with oil on board. This piece highlights a lot of the surreal and dreamlike qualities incorporated into the artist's work. This painting is titled An Archaeological Find and was created in 1962. It is 18 inches by 24 inches and was created using oil on board. In this work, Ponstangle portrays a common theme, visions of abandoned dreamlike civilizations appearing as if just discovered, intact, and untouched. Constangle created these untitled pencil drawings between 1970 and 1974. Each drawing is 26 inches by 22 inches. Constangle often enjoyed experimenting with abstract patterning. In this particular series, he created works that resemble circuit boards and interconnected networks. This is a theme that is later featured in much of his paintings. This is an untitled painting by Franz Joseph Ponstengel, created in 1965, featuring a donkey with a priest. Standing at 30 inches by 26 inches and created using oil on board. In this work, the artist shows his prioritization of creating visual interest in creating a false world over just fooling the viewer with illusion. Franz Joseph Ponstengel created this untitled and unfinished work in 1970 and finished it in 1972, standing at 42 inches by 50 inches and created using oil on board. The unfinished nature of this piece allows us to see the methodology Ponstengel used to develop his blending of the realistic and the surrealistic. In turn, it also allows us to see the process with which he places his items floating in space. Created by Ponstengel in 1970, this untitled work features Model T cars on a white background, standing at 25 inches by 37 inches and created using oil on canvas. These cars appear to be bursting through the plane in all sorts of directions, creating an illusion that is wondrous to the eye. Wynne Zibian was born in Brooklyn, New York, and was one of the first men to attend Hunter College at a time when New York artists were teaching there. He worked through an abstract phase right through to his present trompe l'oeil style. He was awarded the William Graff Memorial Scholarship for graduate study in painting. He lived in Manhattan for a number of years before moving to his present studio, a barn in Rockland County, New York. Shown here is Wynn Zibian's I Told You Not To Shake That Bottle, created in 2007. This piece is 14 inches by 18 inches and was created using acrylic on canvas with a trompe l'oeil frame. The playfulness of the artist combined with his illusionary skill can be seen in this piece and throughout his collection of work in this exhibition. The name of his work complements the idyllic landscape splattered with ink. Shown here is Wynne Zibian's painting, Hey Dude, created in 2009. 26 inches by 35 inches, painted using acrylic on canvas with a trompe l'oeil frame. Here the artist blends the modern and commercial with the traditional methods of trompe l'oeil. He places a child's toy, balancing on a tightrope, interacting playfully with the tranquility of the surrounding environment. Shown here is Wynne Zibian's painting RSVP, created in 2021. This piece is 12 inches by 9 inches and was created using acrylic on linen and with the addition of a trompe l'oeil frame. Note once again the artist's continued use of illusionary frames, playfully fooling the eye. Shown here is Wynne Zibian's painting Fish, created in 2019. 11 by 14 inches, painted using acrylic on wood once again with a trompe l'oeil frame. The artist really strives to use illusion to create a really otherworldly sense of depth. Shown here is Wynne Zibian's Sedimental Journey, created in 2018. 25.75 inches 
by 28.5 inches. Created using acrylic on canvas with a trunk leaf frame. In all of Winzibian's pieces shown in this exhibition, the artist's implementation of hand-painted trunk leaf frames highlights his dedication to fooling and intriguing the viewer. In this particular piece, he creates a frame within the frame and breaks the illusion with nature bursting through the picture plane. In our final room, our curator chose to show everyday examples of trompe l'oeil and surrealism to better connect and engage the viewer's experience with the exhibition shown today. Shown here is a selection of everyday trompe l'oeil occurrences. We have a photo of liquid nylon stockings, a very popular and new fashion trend when nylon was scarce during World War II. A photo of a helmet painted to look like a human head. And an infamous photo by artist Tanaka Tatsuya called Grapes and Raisins. Shown to our left, we have a reproduction of John F. Pito's office board, which was painted in 1885 by the artist. Here we show it on quilted fabric reproduction using a repeat pattern of the painting. To our right, we have John F. Pito's candlestick pipe and tobacco box, which he painted in 1890, also shown using a quilting fabric reproduction with repeat pattern of the painting. Shown to the left is a door with illusionary wonders all its own. Generously lent to us by the Island Heights Cultural and Heritage House, this faux wood finished door creates an illusion of a solid wood door when it is simply a plywood door. Shown right is a mirror whose origin is unknown, estimated to be from the 1800s. This mirror is decorated so that the viewer does not seem vain, just as looking at art. Shown to our left, we have a wall mural created by artist Pita. Pita created this work for the Stad von Kunst mural project in 2019. This artist transformed an ordinary building into 3D abstract forms with optical illusion art. Shown to the center is a building located at King George V in Paris. It is known as the Melting Building and was created in 2018. This was created using only paint and illusion and is a building that appears to be melting in the sun. Shown to our right, we have a mural created by a beloved street artist, J.R., and it is known as the Palazzo Farnese, and it was created in 2020 to 2021. This artist covered the facade of the Embassy of France with an installation of the 17th century Baroque masterpiece, Karashi Gallery. Shown in these two images, we have various illusionary items selected by our curator to better highlight the real life connections between you and Trump Floyd. Listed from left to right in the image on the left, is a gorilla made entirely of colored pencils, a supposedly giant cat sleeping on a house, and a pair of rubber rain boots that may really not be rubber. Shown in the image on the right, we have a tabletop with bad news on the top left. On the bottom left, we have a boy in what looks to be a window. And shown on the right, in both images, we have some illusionary street art one showing Legos and the other showing two hands peering to hold open the pathway underneath. For more information, please visit us online at pedomuseum.org.